Sir, I think this is a very serious subject for Americans because we don't, as a whole, we don't know what the church is. Mm -hmm. We think the church is a building. Right. You know, but it's mm -hmm. not. The church is us. Right. And that's why I like to talk about it. Uh, let's pray. Father, we come to you now in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Lord, we thank you for these uh, people that have gathered here today mm -hmm. to study your word. Lord, your word tells us to study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Father, I pray now, Lord, for the, the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I pray, Lord, that it's not me that's speaking, but it's you. And I'm just going to be subject to you. I'm going to surrender myself. And I pray, Lord, you use me like the pen of a ready writer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. amen. The church. Hmm. I've and my thinking is just like everybody else is. You know, I think about the church, I think about a church house. Mm -hmm. But actually, this church house is a place that we meet. Mm -hmm. yeah. But we are the church. Right. Uh, our problem seems to be that we want to serve God in the fleshly realm of reasoning, thinking, weighing out what each church has to offer for us in programs and benefits etc you know whenever we select a church to go to it should be through prayer mm -hmm. not going over there to see what they offer us and if we like the <laughs> programs or not that's not what it's about and whenever we do go to look for a place to worship God we ought to pray about it we ought to let God lead us and put us where he has us for a purpose because we are the church and we worship in a place called in American thinking the church mm -hmm. amen yeah. Galatians 5 16 says definitely it definitely states walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh the church was not intended to be what man has made of it, a place to come in and receive a blessing and then go our way and forget about our walk with God until next Sunday morning or whichever is convenient for us to come again. But in truth, we all are entwined in a very integral part of the living organism as believers we are the church mm -hmm. and as the church I have some scripture that I would like to bring out the church in the scriptures always refers to a body of believers it never refers to a building or a place of worship you know whenever this Bible was wrote they were meeting in their houses. That was yeah. where they went to worship God, to meet yeah. and hear the word. They didn't have church houses. But as we read in the book of Acts, they did meet in the synagogues. Mm -hmm. And they preached Jesus Christ in the synagogues, which was mm -hmm. a very dangerous place mm -hmm. to be preaching about Christ. And mm -hmm. it did cost some lives. For they were attacked for what they were doing. Mm -hmm. But they would go to the synagogue because the synagogue they related to a place of God's house and they went to tell the truth that Jesus Christ is Lord and he died for our sins. Amen. So uh, as we look at this, 1 Corinthians 6 19 <coughs> says, what, I'm, what know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? It says, which is in you, whom you have from God. And 20, I want to read that also, and that you are not your own. Right. And 20 says, for you have been bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. You know, Jesus Christ paid a price 
for us that we might be his. That's right. He laid his life down on the cross. He shed mm -hmm. his blood for us. Uh, oh. We couldn't we couldn't earn it. That's right. We couldn't buy it. There's no way that we could come to God except through God's grace. Ephesians 2 and 8, I didn't write that down, but it says, For by grace are you saved through faith, mm -hmm. and that not of yourself. It is the gift of God. The faith is the gift of God, yes. not of works, right. lest any man should boast. You know, we have nothing to brag about. I'm a Christian because we didn't do anything to become a Christian. We just right. believe. But right. God did it all because he gave me the faith to believe right. on Christ. He gave you the faith that you have to believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross. Right. And there's nothing that we have done that we can earn our right to go before God and say, I want to be saved. It's only through God's grace, God's unmerited favor, yes. that we can come and receive Jesus Christ. And yet, we take it so lightly, we treat him so thoughtlessly that we take him for granted. As Americans, I believe we're spoiled. Mm -hmm. I believe we need to re re remember how serious we are that we have Jesus Christ in our life. Right. Amen. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you something. One day we're going to stand before him and we're going to answer yeah. for everything in our lives. That includes me. That includes you. Mm -hmm. One day every knee will bow. Yes. Every tongue will confess That's right. that Jesus Christ is Lord. And we may take him lightly here on earth, but one of these days we're going to be real serious about our relationship with him yeah. mm -hmm. when we stand before him. And we, don't, we better pray that we don't hear and say, depart from me, you worker of iniquity, I right. owe you not. Because when we go before him, he's going to look right straight into our heart. Right. He knows us better than we know ourselves. Right. Sometimes our heart deceives us. We think that we're doing okay. We think we're all right. But we're not where God wants us. Amen? Amen. We need to get it right. That's right. We need to love him. I don't serve God because I'm afraid of him. I serve God because I love him. Yes. And I know what he did for me. And I know where he brought me from. Yes. I tell you what, I can think back and I think, well, God, why did you even love me? Yes. I was his enemy. Mm -hmm. I cursed right. him. I lived against him. I didn't want anything to do with him. But I'm gonna tell you something. He loves you mm -hmm. whenever you come to him. Right. Just as if you were doing the best in the world. His yeah. love is not like our love. Amen. His love is past understanding. Amen? That's right. Amen. <coughs> Don't excuse me. I'm a sentimental person. And sometimes I uh, get carried away. That's all right. <laughs> That's all right. You know, before I got saved, I don't think you could have made me cry if you'd have beat me over the head with a sledgehammer. Because I thought <laughs> men don't cry. Yeah. But after I received Christ, I became a big cry baby. You mm -hmm. know, it's it's good that we can feel his presence and know right. that he's yeah. there. Yeah. And uh, I am emotional about my relationship with him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I know sometimes I need to stop it. But I just don't want to. I don't want to let it pass yeah. this way. Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. I'd like to go to in the first Corinthians chapter twelve. And uh, it's such a good good scripture there. Chapter twelve, verse twelve through twenty six. Did you get that, Robert? Yeah. Uh, yes sir. Okay. I didn't know if he had it on the board or not. He does. Yep. All right. I tell you what, I can read it off that board easier than I can read it out of that Bible and hold it wide. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, so let's just, uh, First Corinthians 12 and 12. The Apostle Paul is talking about the church. Right. He says, For as the body is one, and hath many members, 
And all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I am not of this body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? But now hath God set the members, every one of them, in the body, as it has pleased him. And if they were all one member, where were the body? But now are they many members, yet but one body. And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. Can you go back to uh, 19... And if they are all one member, where were the body? Let's go ahead and go back to 21. And if I can say unto the hand, I, am not, I have no need of thee, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. Nay, much more, those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. And these members of the body, which we think to be less honorable, upon these we restore more abundant honor, and our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. For our comely parts have no need, but God has tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to that part which lacked. That there should be no schism in the body, but the members should have the same care one for another. And whether one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. Or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. You know, as we look at Paul comparing the body of a person with the church, mm -hmm. he says God has set these members in the body. Now, let me tell you something. Your liver cannot be your heart. Okay. <laughs> God has put us as members in the body of Christ. You cannot be me, but I can't be you. I have a function. God has put me into this body with a certain purpose for me to function in that capacity. And that's where God wants us to be, where he put us. Mm -hmm. And some people say, well, how do I know what my function is? I'm going to tell you an easy way to find out what it is. You stay prayed up. You walk with God. You walk in obedience to God. And as you do that, you'll find that you naturally are doing the things that God has appointed for you to do. Mm -hmm. right. You don't have to have somebody come tell you, well, God's given you a gift of prophecy. God's given you a gift of healing. God's given you a gift of giving. Or whatever the gift is, right. it'll manifest itself yeah. as you walk with God in obedience. You'll find that you're doing right. those very things. Amen. Because God set you in that body for a purpose. I'm going to tell you, when my, my foot starts itching or something's not right, that head up here tells that hand, say, go down there and minister to that foot. Right. <laughs> you get down there, that thing's itching. You scratch that foot. Mm -hmm. Or you uh, see what's wrong with it. Uh, the, the members in our body care one for another. There's no schism. There's no division in the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. But whenever we, as the body of Christ, we need to bear in mind that we're to be like that towards our brothers and our sisters. Yeah. If they have a need, we need to love our brothers. Right. We need to love our sisters. 
And if we don't love them, my Bible says we're not in Christ. That's right. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's what I read. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something. When you see a brother has a need, you be there to help them. Mm -hmm. yeah. You go and you minister to them. Because we are to love and care right. one for another. We're not supposed to say, well, I didn't like him anyway. I don't care what happens to him. There's something <laughs> wrong when we have an attitude like that. Right. Or if someone gets a blessing from God and you think, I don't know why God did that. Those people didn't need that. They're not any good. There's something wrong with us. That's right. Amen. We need to pray through. Mm -hmm. We need to say, God, I need help. <laughs> right, exactly. I need to care for my brother. I need to care for my sister. I need to love my brothers and sisters in Christ. And I need to minister one to another. That's the way the body does. And Paul said there's no division in the body. Then our body is to take care of one another. And that's the way the church is. We're members of the body of Christ. Right. We are the church. The church that Jesus said the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. Right. That's who we are. Yeah. We're more than overcomers through Christ. We have something that God has put in us so that we might stand whenever most time people would fall away. But we're to stand and go against the enemy. We're not to let the enemy take us away from God. I'm going to tell you what. Satan would like to pull every one of us out of the church. He would like to make us destroy ourselves. But I'm going to tell you, we serve a bigger God than he is. Jesus Christ says, you are more than overcomers to Christ. He is the life. He is the truth. He is the way. That's all I need is Jesus. I don't need to worry about anything else. I just need to worry about my relationship with him. Amen. And I need to love him. I need to love him more than I love myself or more than I love my wife, more than I love my children. Mm -hmm. There has to be a great love in your heart. And I'm going to tell you, I was reading the Bible, and it said something to me. It said the love of God is shed abroad in your hearts by the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. yeah, means, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. It means God has put love mm -hmm. in us. Sometimes I think we don't realize what we have. But I'm going to tell you a secret. You want to know what the love of God is in you? Start getting down on your knees. Mm -hmm. Pray through. You know, that's an old time saying. Mm -hmm. Pray through until the Holy Ghost comes yeah. upon you. Until there's nobody in that room but you and Jesus. Until you're caught up in Christ. That's, that's when you'll find out. That love of God is so powerful. Amen. It's so pure. Mm -hmm. It's so wonderful. That's what's in us. God put it in us. Yes. It's mm -hmm. in us. Yeah. That's right. You know, because we have it, does that mean we're using it? Not necessarily. We have a free will. Mm -hmm. God give each one of us a free will. You know, I don't have to do anything I don't want to do. I can tell God I don't like you. I don't want to go to church. I don't want to serve you. Hey, it wouldn't work, but I could do it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, years ago, as a young Christian, I had a lot of things happening in my family. And I was working in the church. I was teaching Sunday school. I was a deacon. I was faithful to tithe, to work. And the devil started telling me, you ever listen to the devil? <laughs> he started telling me, you know what? God is not treating you right. You do this and you do that and all this and look at all the trouble you got. So I decided I'm gonna, I'm gonna quit serving God. And I prayed and I said, God, I've got all this stuff happening to me and you're just letting it happen. And you know I've been serving you with all my heart. But God, I'm not going to serve you anymore. I'm going to quit because I'm not getting treated right. <laughs> stupid, stupid. <laughs> yeah. So I quit going to church for one year. 
You talk about hard headed mm -hmm. and stupid. One year, I didn't go to church. One night, I was so miserable. I'm not a drinker. I never was a drinker. I went and bought a pint of whiskey. Mm -hmm. And I lived way out in the country. And I brought that whiskey home. And I sat down and I drank it like you drank Cokes or tea. <laughs> and I didn't even drink. Let me tell you what, that stuff knocked me for a loop. <laughs> I was walking one o'clock in the morning. I was walking down them old country roads out there in Mission Valley, and I was crying, and I was just miserable, crying, drunk, stumbling around. And God spoke to me, and he said, you're a prodigal son, you need mm -hmm. to come home. Mm -hmm. Brother, in a drunk stupor, I said, God, I'm sorry. I repent. I was wrong. I need to come back. Mm -hmm. I need you in my life. Let me tell you, God saw me coming. He killed a fatted calf. He mm -hmm. put a robe on me. He put a ring on my finger. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he ran and he met me. <laughs> yeah. That was in 1985. I did this. I started going back to church. Mm -hmm. I became assistant pastor. I was ordained as a Baptist preacher. Then God opened up doors. I started going into old Mexico. Mm -hmm. I was preaching probably two months out of the year. I was down in old Mexico preaching in mission fields. You know, that's what happened. Mm -hmm. When you surrender to God, mm -hmm. God has yeah. to put us through some things because we got hard heads and we right. don't want to listen. We don't want to let God. But I'm going to tell you, when he puts you behind that shed and gives you a good old whipping, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you come out of there different. Yeah. <laughs> I came out of there, I wasn't right, and I was thankful that God had put his love in my heart and he was using me. And I was a new person again in Christ. Mm -hmm. And then I learned something. Don't listen to the enemy. That's right. He'll bring you down. Yeah. Satan came to kill, steal, and destroy. That's right. And that's exactly what he was doing with my life that day. Okay. I need a Kleenex. Myrna, <laughs> you know where there's a Kleenex? It's in there. Right here. Right here. Mm -hmm. We're putting this on Facebook, right? Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> Thank you. They might need one too. <laughs> I would like to go to I think let me let me get my bearings here. Did you have a comment, Mickey? I'm I sorry. I was just going to pull the scriptures up. Scripture said, if you see your brother in need and you shut up your bowels of compassion against him, how dwell the love of God? Amen. That's right. Amen. 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 Okay. I tell you what, my mind just went blank. <laughs> <laughs> But what I want to do is go to Ephesians chapter 4. And um, I think 14 and 15. Mm -hmm. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 14 and 15. In, in verse 16, if I might just offer... Uh, I was going to say a minute ago as you were describing the body and yeah. how we are all members right. and we are fitly joined Amen. together. Amen. Each one of us does have a yep. purpose and this scripture is going to bring exactly, that out. Exactly. It ties it together. Mm -hmm. That we henceforth be no more children tossed about to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine. Um, I'm having trouble saying this Bible. You got it on the board? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, what am I doing? <laughs> okay. Yeah. We, 
and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things which is the head. Who's the head? Christ. Even Christ. Right. You see, he's the head. <laughs> he's the one that tells the members. The head tells the members yes. what to do. Jesus Christ is the head of this body. Yeah. And he's over us. And we need to listen to him. And then verse 16. Uh, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth according to the effectual working in the measure of every part maketh increase of the body into the edifying of itself in love. Amen. We are held together mm -hmm. by Christ. That's right. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I tell you what, God knows what he's doing. Amen. We don't know. We don't understand a lot of things. We don't see the, the things that are going on a lot of times. And the Apostle Paul addressed that in Corinthians. He says, we know in part, we look and through a glass as darkly, mm -hmm. but then we shall know when, when that which is perfect is come. What is perfect? Jesus Christ, Amen. when he comes, we'll know in full. Yes. Right. But until then... We, you know what we got to do? We got to walk by faith. That's right. <laughs> well, I'm living by faith. I feel no alarm. Trusting, abiding in his great love. <laughs> I'm glad that I don't have to walk by sight. That's right. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I know who I believe in. Uh -huh. Amen. And I'm going to walk with him. Yes. We walk by faith. Every day we get up, we don't know what that day might bring. Right. But Jesus said, don't worry about tomorrow because the evil of that day is sufficient unto itself. He said, just live this day and then mm -hmm. tomorrow you live that day. Yeah. Don't worry yeah. about what's coming because God has his hand on you. Yeah. If he sees a little sparrow fall and he knows it, how much more does he love you? How much more would he do for you? I'm going to tell you something. We're we're in the hands of a great God. We're Amen. in the hands of a God that loves us so much that he sent his only son that he would die upon the cross and pay the price that we might go free. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. That's right. Hallelujah. <laughs> I just love the Lord. And I'm glad that <laughs> I'm glad that I get to stand up sometimes and talk <laughs> for him. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and you know what? There is nothing in the world as good as walking with God and mm -hmm. knowing God. I wouldn't trade it for a million dollars. I am where I want to be. I wouldn't want to go back and live anything over that I've lived so far. Mm -hmm. It took a lot of things to get to where I'm at today. Mm -hmm. And you say, well, you're an old man. I know it. But I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to get a new body. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I'm close. I'm gonna, not, not too many more years, Sister Mickey. We're going to have a new body. Hallelujah. Amen. We're not going to have to worry about the eyes, the ears, the teeth, the, yeah. the arthritis, and all the stuff that this old body gets into. But I'm going to tell you, we're going to have a new body. We're going to yeah. be like Christ. Amen. We're going to be glorified like him. And we're going to get to sing. You know what? Maybe you never could sing a lick in your life. But when you go up into heaven, God's going to give you a voice. You're going to be able to praise Amen. him in such a way that nobody's ever heard such singing. I'll tell you, I believe the grass sings up there. Amen. I believe the flowers sings up there. I believe the fragrance of heaven is the sweetest thing that you'll ever find anywhere. And that's where we're headed Amen. to be with him. Amen. Amen. I get carried away. I forget about my, my <laughs> scriptures and stuff. <laughs> That's but, uh, yeah. Hebrews 10, 24, and 25. I don't know if Brother Robert got that. Yeah, yeah. He do. Okay. Hebrews 10, 24. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of yourselves together, ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much more as you see the day approaching. Man. What day? 
Mm -hmm. The day of the Lord. That's right. yes. He's coming. Jesus is coming. Mm -hmm. He's coming soon. At Hebrews says, forsake not right. the assembling together of yourselves. We need to get together. We mm -hmm. need to worship God together. Mm -hmm. We need to be here together and mm -hmm. ministering one to another. Okay. You know, I'm going to I'm going to say something that somebody probably won't like, <laughs> but uh, it's the truth. Mm -hmm. Before I go to my next scripture, we were going to a church <clears throat> before we came here. It was a Spanish church, the City Harvest. We went over there for, I think, over two years, almost three years. And, of course, it's a Mexican church and we love the people they loved us they quit having church on Sunday night I told the pastor <clears throat> I said brother Roy if we don't have church on Sunday night we're going backwards and we're not going forwards he said what I said we're going backwards we're not going forwards I said we need Sunday night service he said well, well you want to preach it I said, well, I will if you want me to. He said, well, it's yours. You take Sunday nights. So I started <laughs> preaching on Sunday nights over there. But I wasn't comfortable with it because I wasn't a pastor. I was, I know, it felt like I was invading <laughs> private property. But uh, I think I did it for four months or something like that. And I... And we decided that we were going to leave and find another church to go to. We weren't mad at them. We wasn't unhappy with them. Uh, Roy still comes to our Bible studies on Thursday night. We're <laughs> friends. We talk to each other. We love one another. But I, we needed to change. Uh, sometimes you just get to a place where you're done there mm -hmm. and you need to move on. And uh, I think it was more cultural than it was anything else. You know, I don't speak Spanish. I can speak enough to get into trouble, but not <laughs> enough to talk to people. Right. <laughs> I might say something wrong. <laughs> yeah. But we uh, decided to move, and that's when we started coming over here. And uh, I, I think Pastor Chad, he brings that word, and he does a good job. Today, it's hard to find a church or a congregation with a pastor that preaches the word yes. and don't fool around with all kind of other stuff. But uh, I tell you what, this man preaches the word and he does a good job. Yes, he does. Amen. And I think I heard somebody say that's the best kept secret in Victoria. I don't remember yeah. who it was. <laughs> <laughs> I can't see why anybody couldn't flourish underneath the preaching of the Word like that. Amen. The Word of God. Hide the Word of God in your heart that you might not sin, sin against God. Yes. Hide the Word of God in your heart that you might not sin against God. Do you want to get close to God? Get in the Word. Do you want God to use you? Get in the Word. Mm -hmm. and let the Word get in you. Amen. Spend as much time in the Word as you do in front of a TV set, you'll be a spiritual giant. Mm -hmm. Amen? <laughs> That's true. I yeah. mean, I'm not trying to hurt your feelings, but I'm just telling you, if you want to grow in the Lord, get in the Bible. That's right. And yeah. read the New Testament. Read mm -hmm. it over and over. Write it down. Mm -hmm. uh, sleep with it. Mm -hmm. That's right. <laughs> Amen. I, I remember as a young Christian, I didn't just read the Bible, I wrote the Bible. I'd read it and I'd write it. Mm -hmm. And you know what it did to me? It put that word in my heart. Mm -hmm. And now when I'm, I'm in a place and something's happening, God's word springs up and, right. yeah. and I'm able to use that word. It, the word of God is a, a sword, sharper yeah. than a two-edged sword. It pierces us under, even under the marrow of the bones. Yeah. It rightly divides 
Just let that word get in you. You can have what you want in God if you'll let God have what he wants in you. Yes. Amen. Amen. And the last scripture I have, and I did pretty good on that clock. I'm not <laughs> out of time. Matthew 22 and uh, 34 through 40. I wrote that down. I'll have to read it out of that little small print. And I don't know if you got that. Did you get that, brother? Right? You did real good. <laughs> All right, Matthew 22, 34 and 40. And you say, well, why are you talking about this? Because this is what it's all based on. Mm -hmm. This is what it's all about. It says, but when the Pharisees had heard that he put the Sadducees in silence, they were gathered together. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him and saying, Master, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's, you know what? I don't have to say much about that. That's right. It says it. <laughs> exactly. It says what we need. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Our whole relationship with God is based on love. Amen. You know, even... The Apostle John wrote in 1 John, if you say you love God and you hate your brother, you're a liar. That's right. We're to love one another. Yeah. We're to love God. I know we're not always going to get along with everybody and agree on every little technicality that there is. Right. But I'll tell you one thing we better agree on, and that's Jesus Christ. Amen. Yeah. Hanging on the cross and shedding his blood and laying his life down for us. Yeah. Amen. If we can't agree on that, we're not brothers. We're not sisters. We're at odds with one another. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, we can get into it. I say, well, I believe in the pre trib. And you say, well, I believe in the post trib. And I believe in the mid trib. And, right. <laughs> and we can have disagreements. But that don't mean that we have to get into a fight and separate over it and say, I don't want nothing to do with you anymore because you don't believe like I believe. Right. There, you can't hardly find two people that are going to agree true. on everything. That's true. I mean, I've got friends and I love dearly. We disagree on some things. Mm -hmm. well, one thing, you know, I'm not even going to get into it, but <laughs> the tribulation is one of the biggest things that Christians disagree about. Mm -hmm. Is it post-trib? Is it mid-trib? Yeah. Is it pre-trib? I believe in the pan-trib. You know what the pan-trib is? Mm -hmm. It'll all pan out when God wants it to. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> yeah. Okay. God bless y'all. Thank you for being here and putting up with me. And I hope God does touch you and and. and enlighten you with the word and I just thank God for giving me an opportunity to come and to teach this class mm -hmm. and you know some people say well you wasn't teaching you just got the preaching at us <laughs> that's okay but uh, you know what I think teaching and preaching are first cousins that's right <laughs> it's <true>. they run <laughs> real close to each other <laughs> mm -hmm. sometimes you preach and sometimes you teach that's right but it's all for the glory of God. Amen. Amen. Let's stand and be dismissed. Amen. And get ready for the service to come. Amen. Amen.